US tech stocks slide overnight. The Bank of Japan holds rates, but signals more is still on the cards. UK rate bets retreat after a new government's first budget. Australian retail sales jump and China's manufacturing sector expands ahead of further stimulus expected next week. That's coming up in our five things in five minutes. And then in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ economist Vicky Shoujou looks at the rise and the rise of China's electric vehicle industry. The top leadership, they really want to produce new quality productive force. So EV was part of the new productive force product. And also China has a very ambitious goal in climate change. But first in 5 and 5 with ANZ. In global markets, US tech stocks are down 1.5% to 2.5% by 4am Sydney Melbourne time after weak profit outlooks from Meta, which is Facebook, and Microsoft. Meanwhile, the Bank of Japan held rates yesterday while indicating further hikes from 0.25% were still on the cards. The yen strengthened slightly on comments from the Bank of Japan's governor that currency moves were having an impact on prices. Yesterday also saw the new UK government's first budget. ANZ head of G3 Economics, Brian Martin says plans for increased spending and higher bond issuance saw yields rise, affecting bets for how many rate cuts the Bank of England might make this year. At the margin, some of the tax hikes were not as punitive as some thought they might be. And given the confirmation that there will be a large increase in public expenditure over the course of the Parliament, interstate expectations were dialed back in the UK and the market is now beginning to think that it would be difficult for the Bank of England to achieve its inflation targets over the medium term. And therefore, it's only looking now for one twenty-five basis point rate cut this year compared to two rate cuts just a couple of days ago. As of 4 a.m. Sydney Melbourne, in time, the US dollar index was up 0.17%, while the Aussie dollar was down 0.15% at 65.61 US cents, and the Kiwi down 0.26% at 59.57 US cents. Number two, Australian retail sales volumes posted their strongest growth since mid-2022 in the third quarter. They rose 0.5%. Now, that was in line with expectations. ANZ economist Maddie Dunk says the combined impact of cost of living relief, moderating inflation, and tax cuts is flat flowing through to a modest pickup in spending, but that it'll still be a slow grind from here. I think that the RBI is definitely conscious that we are likely to see spending pick up from here. It's baked into our forecast. It's baked into the Reserve Bank's forecast as well. And one of the really interesting things is going to be around the behaviour at those end of year sales. So things like Black Friday, Boxing Day, we know have become really important on the retail calendar and households are very price sensitive at the moment given how tight budgets are right now. So I think that that will be something that the RBA is watching pretty closely as to the spending behaviour at the end of this year. Number three, private sector credit growth in Australia was 0.5% for the third month in a row in September. Maddie says within that, a rise in housing credit caught the eye. That ticked up slightly to 0.5% in September after it eased in August. And I thought the housing credit story was somewhat interesting because we do know that the housing market is cooling. You can see in the sales volume data, for example, that sales aren't as strong as they were. And that seemed to have flowed through to those August numbers, but we did see a little bit of a pickup in September. So that will be one to watch. Number four, New Zealand's business confidence continued its march upward in October, hitting a fresh 10-year high of 66 in ANZ's Business Outlook survey. ANZ New Zealand Chief Economist Sharon Zollner says it looks clear that rate cuts by the Reserve Bank are having a real effect. We saw a lift in not only firms' expectations for their own activity, but also a big, big lift in investment intentions, which is really encouraging. You would expect that investment intentions would be one of the indicators that is more sensitive to interest rates. It rose from 9 to 20. That's the highest since mid-2021. So it's fair to say that is surging. And similar to that, we saw another 10-point lift in commercial construction activity. Those two seem to move pretty closely together. We've seen a lift in employment intentions as well, profit expectations. So all good news there. Number five. In China, a surprise expansion in manufacturing activity in October, albeit only just with a PMI reading of 50.1. Remember, that's over 50, which means expansion. That has boosted hope 
hope that recent stimulus efforts are working. ANZ economist Vicky Xiaojo says the expansion added to excitement and anticipation around further stimulus announcements expected next week. This is the first time in six months above 50. Service PMI also rose into expansionary territory thanks to the golden week in October. Overall, the improved factory activities indicate positive sentiment after stimulus announcement, and we expect the PMI stays expansionary in the next two months. This is a good start for Q4, and we are confident in our annual GDP forecast of 4.9%. Vicky Xiaojo there, who we stay with for our bonus deep dive interview on the emergence of China's electric vehicle industry and why it is being backed by the country's top leadership to become a key global producer. EV sales have ramped up in China since 2020, and the passenger EV sales surpassed 50% for the first time in July 2024. Despite the astonishing sales speed, the EV penetration rate in China is still below uh, Nordic countries. For example, Norway now has 29% of penetration rate. And that shows China still have a great market potential for EV sales. Yes, could you give us a sense of how quickly production has grown and how advanced some of the cars are and their comparative costs and prices? The production really ramped up after around COVID time 2020 and from very minimum EV production to be the largest EV producers now. To give you an example, in 2023, seven of the top 10 global battery EV and the plug-in hybrid EV manufacturers are China. Chinese brand. Within all the competitors, BYD, Gili, and Cherry stood out to be the top players in both fields. There are some analysts in the market also estimate that BYD will surpass Tesla to be the top producer of battery EV in 2024. So could you tell us a bit more about the EV ecosystem in China and how that's developed? China's success in the EV industry cannot be explained uh, without the comprehensive ecosystem. First of all is the support from the upstream industry. Six out of top 10 EV battery manufacturers in 2023 were from China. Apart from that, China also has the world's largest public charging infrastructure network, which is a big incentive to encourage consumers in China to choose EV over the conventional vehicles. Lastly, China also invests heavily in innovation and R&D with increasing number of patent publications in EV. EV sectors. So where is most of the production in China going? China's car production is mainly for domestic consumption, with only 12% of the productions going overseas. Besides Tesla and other European brands made in China, most of the production going overseas are actually Chinese brands. The BYD we mentioned earlier account for 31% of the export in August 2024. And then the rest of the Chinese brands such as Cherry, Wuling, expand, they are all very competitive. And could you talk about the issue of uh, subsidies and how China is involved in subsidizing some of these vehicles? First of all, subsidies are not uncommon in EV space. Back to 1990s, uh, we've seen Norwegian government already started subsidizing EV purchase by offering tax benefits, free parking, etc. China faced out direct rebate in 2022, but has maintained the sales tax waiver for EV purchase, which is a very common practice in other countries as well, such as France and Germany. But under the current economic environment, some local government in China still offer rebate to EV purchase under the trading program. And what are the other reasons that the EV sector in China is being encouraged? Because I imagine that electric vehicles are cleaner and less carbon intensive than normal vehicles. First of all, I think the reason why China is full in the EV space is the message from the top management. I think from the top leadership, they really want to produce new quality productive force. So EV was part of the new productive force 
product. And also, China has a very ambitious goal in climate change. From the top leadership, they ordered that China has to achieve carbon neutralization before 2060. Lastly, the EV-related infrastructure investment, R&D, and other digital applications will benefit China in the future competition. Vicky Xiaojo there. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Friday, November the 1st. Catch you next week with analysis of what US jobs data tonight could mean for the Fed's rate cut cycle. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.